Thank you to DMCN for publishing this work and allowing me to provide the community with a podcast. My name is Dan Whitney, and I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation at the University of Michigan. The work I will highlight here is an extension of my prior work that recently developed the Whitney Comorbidity Index, or WCI, which is a new, simple, and clinically friendly tool designed to monitor the health and disease status specific to adults with cerebral palsy. The paper is published in the March 2021 issue in DMCN, and a link to this work's video podcast can be found at the bottom of the slide. The WCI has two versions, an unweighted and a weighted version. For brevity, I will only discuss the weighted version. The WCI score is calculated as the sum of 27 clinically relevant morbidities, where each morbidity gets a score of zero if absent or one if present. There are a few barriers that need to be addressed prior to adopting the WCI into routine clinical practice. First, the WCI was developed from a privately insured cohort of adults with cerebral palsy. In the US, this represents a smaller portion and a relatively healthier segment of the greater adult population with cerebral palsy. So the validity of the WCI to the greater population is unknown. Further, there's a need to understand how to use the WCI in the clinic for decision making. This information can be used to prompt clinicians for additional screening or intervention implementation, or perhaps justify the need for additional testing to insurance providers. To address these barriers, we leverage data from about 17,000 adults with cerebral palsy from the Medicare database, which is reflective of a moderate to severe disease status of the adult population with cerebral palsy. We examine outcomes for the entire sample and then for subgroups consisting of co-occurring epilepsy and or intellectual disabilities. The focus of the study was to examine the ability of the WCI to predict two-year mortality. In the first set of results, using various statistical criteria and modeling, we found that the WCI is a valid method for predicting mortality among adults with cerebral palsy with and without co-occurring epilepsy and or intellectual disabilities which really enhances the clinical utility of the WCI for the broader adult population with cerebral palsy. Next, we examine the association between the WCI scores with two-year mortality after adjusting for demographics. The reference here are individuals with a WCI score of zero. This graph shows that the rate of mortality increases with a higher WCI score. Notably, the y-axis is quite large for the effect estimate of adjusted hazard ratios. And this is because of the potent effect of an increasing WCI score with mortality rate. Now, this may actually diminish just how deadly WCI scores are at the lower range. For example, the rate of mortality was tripled for a WCI score of just one. Other notable scores come from the median and interquartile range of WCI scores found in this study. The median WCI score for the entire group was four, indicating that about 50% of this large sample had a WCI score of four or more. The rate of mortality for a WCI score of four was nearly five-fold higher. The upper quartile WCI score was six, indicating that 25% or one in four of this sample had a WCI score of six or more, and the rate of mortality for a WCI score of six was greater than sevenfold higher. Future directions for the WCI include whether it can predict other relevant outcomes beyond mortality, either as is or with modifications that are relevant to the outcome of interest. Further, efforts will be needed to, ter to determine how best to incorporate the WCI in clinical practice. Thank you for taking the time to view this video podcast. I hope you found it helpful and please feel free to contact me with any questions. Thank you.